Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk about all things health and healing from a holistic perspective. And today will be no different. Today, we're going to talk about the foods you need to avoid if you're either pre-diabetic or diabetic, or you have a loved one who is either or, or you're trying to prevent going into the state of pre-diabetes or diabetes. Now, here's why this is so important. They did some recent statistics and they've come up with a statistic that is really mind blowing. 50% of Americans are either pre-diabetic or diabetic. Now just think about that for a second. Half the population is either pre-diabetic, meaning on their way to having type two diabetes or either diabetic. Now this is really important because diabetes is the leading cause of kidney failure not just kidney disease, but kidney failure, meaning you're on dialysis. And you can see in our neighborhoods, especially in urban neighborhoods, uh, dialysis clinics are just as prevalent as McDonald's are today, okay? Number two is one of the leading causes of blindness as well too. Also the leading cause of amputation, also the leading one of the leading causes of heart disease and stroke. As a matter of fact, Somewhere between 50 and 80% of diabetics end up having a stroke or a heart attack, okay? And it's also one of the leading causes of disability, so being disabled, and also the seventh leading cause of death, okay? So just think about that. This is one condition, you know, that isn't as sexy as the other conditions like heart disease or, you know, cancer. So nobody's doing the walks for diabetes. You know, but diabetes is literally affecting 50% of the population. And I won't, in this video, I won't dive into, you know, um, the pathology of diabetes, but in this video, I really want to let you know about the foods you need to avoid. Now, when you have diabetes, you have an issue with what is called the lock and key system, okay? The lock and key system is composed of insulin, your glucose, okay, that you consume uh, and then manufacture through metabolism and then the cell, okay, primarily the muscle cell. Now, the lock and key method is this. When you ingest food and that food has glucose in it in the form of sugar, okay, um, the insulin is essentially the chaperone. It's there to literally grab the glucose, take it to the cell unlock the cell to put the glucose inside of the cells. Let's say for in this instance, a muscle cell. And once the glucose or the blood, the sugar is inside of the cell, that sugar is used to make energy, okay? The energy we need to just have regular cellular function, the energy we need to create energy in and of itself to use the muscle, okay? So it's important to know that lock and key method has to work because if you can't get sugar inside of the cell, the sugar will stay in the blood, which is why the blood sugar elevates, which is essentially what we know as diabetes, elevated blood sugar, okay? Now, what happens is, one, we're consuming too much sugar, okay? In America and in many other developed nations, uh, we're consuming astronomical amounts of sugar. In America in particular, we, we consume about 152 pounds of sugar every year. Again, comparing that to our ancestors in the 1800s, that number was around about one to five pounds of sugar, okay? So we've grown 30 times the amount, you know? So it's really important to understand that we've shifted and a lot of that shift has become, because our food supply has become industrialized and they put sugar in virtually everything. It's in ketchup packs, it's in, you know, uh, salad dressings, it's in virtually every, it's in our spaghetti sauce. They put sugar in everything because they know that we have this natural propensity or towards addiction to sugar. Okay, so the more we eat it, the more we love it, the more we love the product, the more we buy it. Okay, so we're consuming an astronomical amount of sugar today. And so that's the first part that's causing the issue is because it's too much sugar to go into the cell. Okay, there may be a point where the cell says, hey, I got enough. You know, so that's one part of it. The other issue is, is some insulin resistance. Okay, as I mentioned before, 
the insulin is there to be the chaperone. It's to take the blood sugar by the arm and walk it to the cell, unlock the cell, and put the sugar inside of the cell to be used, okay? The, the issue as to why one of the reasons um, insulin is becoming resistant to unlocking that, that cell is because that lock is essentially become um, gummed up. So imagine if we take some bubble gum and put it inside of a lock, okay? Um, now we can't unlock the lock because there's a bubble gum in the lock. Well, that is the fat part, okay? So the more fat we have in the cell, that lock and key method won't work. So as a result, it will become resistant to the sugar, uh, to the insulin opening the cell to put the sugar inside of the cell. Okay, so the combination of those things, too much, too much sugar in our diet, which is triggering the pancreas to create too much insulin, okay? Because the body is now sending a signal saying, hey, there's too much sugar, there's too much insulin. I don't need it inside of the cell. Also, there's too much fat in the diet too, okay? Obesity, again, 75%. 75% of the, the population is either overweight or obese. So we have 75% of the population that's either, either overweight or obese. And then we have 50% of the population that is either pre-diabetic or diabetic. Just look at those two combinations and you can kind of see it's a recipe for disaster, okay? Now here's the, the, the really bad thing you need to understand about when the blood sugar is elevated. When the blood sugar is elevated, it's important to know and understand most of the sugar that we're consuming today isn't the type of sugar that our bodies are naturally designed to uh, process, okay? We're consuming a lot of man-made sugar, a lot of added sugar, okay? And especially in the form of high fructose, high fructose corn syrup or just fructose in general. Because as I write about in my book, uh, education over medication, there's over 75 different names, okay? And in my book, I give you about 55 of them, 54 of them, okay? But there's about 75 different names that when you look at the product label, you will see all of these different names for sugar and they're changing the names of sugar so that you don't have to essentially make one thing, one sugar, and then it have 15 Type 15 grams of sugar versus you're spreading out amongst different names. Okay, so it's a little bit of the trickery that the food industry uses, but there's over 75 different names for sugar, okay? And this sugar, unfortunately, this unnatural sugar, not the sugar primarily that you get from natural sources like fruit, that's not the issue. It's all of the added sugar, the 152 pounds of sugar you know, the man-made sugar, synthetic sugar, that is really the issue because that sugar in our blood vessels is like shards of glass. As a matter of fact, elevated blood sugar will actually cause damage in the lining of the blood vessels, okay? Now, here's what's important. The blood vessels are not just the highways by which blood takes nutrients to the organ systems. The blood vessels are also in those organs as well too. So they not only cause issues with the blood vessels, they're also causing issues with the actual organs too. And this is why, as I mentioned before, uh, diabetes is one of the number one causes of ki kidney failure. Because you got to think, what is, the, what is the function of the kidney? The function of the kidney is to filter the blood. And where is the blood sugar high? Where's the, the sugar high? In the blood. Okay, so, and the blood goes everywhere in the body. It goes from everywhere from the tips of our fingers to the top of our head to the tips of our toes. It goes everywhere. So it causes damage everywhere in the body. This is also why it causes nerve damage as well too. You'll notice that a lot of diabetics will have what is called peripheral uh, neuropathy, which is essentially, you know, damage to the, the nervous system uh, and the peripheral system especially in the limbs and you'll especially feel it in the lower limbs okay this is why again leading to the next thing at least is one of the number one causes of amputation okay because when the blood goes down to the lower limbs there's no pump down there to pump it back we don't have the lungs and the heart that'll pump that blood okay in the lower limbs it depends solely on movement primarily our muscles okay and if we live in a sedentary 
society that we do today, the unfortunate thing is that blood isn't gonna be properly pumped up. And the other issue is this, and this is really important. The, the more and the higher the concentration of the glucose or sugar in the blood, the thicker the blood becomes. Okay, it's just like, you know, if you make like a sugary beverage at home, Okay, like back in the day, we, we used to make Kool-Aid, okay? These little powdery packets with all type of dyes in it, purple, grape, whatever you want to call it, and then you add sugar in it. You're literally pouring sugar into it. Now, the more sugar you pour into it, what you'll notice is that if you were to spill out some of that Kool-Aid, then it would literally clump up. It wouldn't even run on the table. That's because it's now very viscous. Well, that's the same exact thing that happens to the blood when you have a very, very high uh, blood sugar level, okay? The blood becomes very viscous, very thick, which makes it very difficult to pump as well too, to, you know, flow through the river of the body. And especially very difficult in the lower limbs because there's no pump down there. We don't have the lungs to pump it. We don't have the, the heart to pump it, okay? This is why people tend to get um, swelling in the lower limbs, tingling in the lower limbs, amputations and gangrene in the lower limbs as well too. Uh, diabetic neuropathy where there's literal pain, okay, in the body as well too. This is why that happens because again, that sugar, that unnatural sugar is like shards of glass in the, line, in the linings of the blood vessels, okay? So you can see how it plays a role in kidney failure, plays a heart, role in heart disease, elevates the blood pressure, okay? Because the blood becomes so much thicker, harder to pump, increasing the pressure, okay? This is why most diabetics, 50 to 80%, end up having a heart attack or a stroke, okay? So it's so important that you know and understand that elevated blood sugar plays a huge role, you know, in so many other areas of our health as well too, okay? Also elevated insulin levels. And I know that there are a lot of people out there on insulin and this is not me saying you need to stop your insulin. But the goal is to make sure you change your lifestyle in such a way that if you're on insulin, because you no longer have pancreas uh, function or no longer have a pancreas, your job is to get that insulin level as low as possible. And here's why. Because even using elevated um, insulin, the more insulin you use, the more dangerous it becomes for your health. And let me explain why. When you have elevated insulin levels, let's say your pancreas does work. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. It tells the body to store fat. So you're going to gain weight. So it leads to obesity. Okay. The other thing that's really important is that insulin is also going to in, end up leading to high blood pressure, uh, high, higher triglycerides, okay, cholesterol uh, as well. It leads to gout as well too. So people who have gout, your issue could be that you have elevated insulin levels as well too. It leads to uh, erectile dysfunction in men, okay, as well too, heart attacks and strokes. Okay, it increases your risk for heart attacks and stroke, the higher the level of insulin in your body. Also tinnitus or ringing in the ear. So a lot of people will have tinnitus and not understand why. It could be because your insulin levels are elevated, okay? Also uh, vertigo, you know, when you stand up or you have this dizziness, this imbalance that you're constantly feeling. It could be as a result of you having elevated insulin levels as well too. It also enlarges your prostate for men as well too, when you have elevated insulin levels. It also causes PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, in women as well too, which is a huge issue as well too. And it also elevates your risk for cancer as well too. So these are all just things that come from elevated insulin as a result of elevated blood sugar. And if you start to think about it, Americans, consume 152 pounds of unnatural sugar every year, it makes sense that diabetes is affecting half of the population. So it's all tied together. So this is why it's so important that you know and understand these are the foods that you need to avoid. Okay, so let's get into the foods that you need to avoid if you're either pre-diabetic and trying to stop from becoming diabetic, or if you're diabetic, type two and trying to reverse it, or if you're type one and 
many cases that I've, I've actually seen people with type one diabetes who weren't necessary, it wasn't congenital, meaning they didn't develop it when they were one or two years old. Because what you'll notice is, you know, even for infants who are type one diabetic, for the vast majority of them, they're not born that way. It develops over the course of one to two to three years. They usually develop type one diabetes around the age of two or three, okay? And that's a whole nother conversation why that happens, but it's just important for you to know and understand that no matter where you're at in the spectrum, there can be improvement. And in many cases, you can even reverse type two uh, diabetes and definitely type and pre, pre diabetes. And in some rare cases, you definitely, I have seen um, people uh, reverse type one as well too. So really, really important because even type one, for a lot of type one diabetics, they went from type two to type one, okay? That just means the condition worsened, okay? You may still have some function of the pancreas, and if you still have some of those beta cells in that pancreas still functioning, it's important to understand that you it's possible to regain function, okay? But you cannot do that without making a lifestyle change, and I wanna really emphasize this to people. Um, speak with your doctor before making any type of shifts in your medications because I do not recommend that. I tell people all the time, I come from both sides of the fence. I've been on the side of the fence, working in the hospital, working with patients, filling their prescriptions, et cetera. I'm also on this natural side now. What I will tell you is that some people are so unhealthy that their, their bodies must be manipulated to maintain life. And that manipulation comes through the form of medication because that's what essentially pharmacological pharmacokinetics are or the use of pharma pharmaceuticals are all right so you gotta you gotta work with your doctor on this because the last thing you want <laughs> is to pass out and be hypoglycemic okay so i want to make sure you guys understand that so let's jump into these five foods you need to avoid if you're trying to improve your condition around diabetes okay number one refined carbohydrates Okay, you got to get rid of the refined carbohydrates. As a matter of fact, they are not a food. Okay, refined carbohydrates are not a food. We are not supposed to be eating any of them. We, it's not that we're supposed to eat them sparingly. We're supposed to completely eliminate them from our food supply. What are refined carbohydrates? That's white bread, that's white flour, that's breakfast cereals, that's um, pizza dough. Um, that's white rice, that's pasta, okay? And notice I said refined, okay? Refined means processed. That means that all of, anything that was good in it was taken out. The vitamins, the minerals, the trace elements, etc. they were taken out, okay? That also means the fiber was taken out too. Anything good in it was removed from it. This is what allows it to stay on the shelf for longer, okay? When you take things out that are natural, now it's unnatural it can last longer, okay? Now, this is why these foods, once they're robbed of all their nutrients, okay? They've been processed out of them. This is why they're then enriched because they were poor, okay? So they're then enriched with unnatural vitamins and minerals and unnatural fiber that your body most likely will not recognize because real recognize real. So you gotta stay away from the refined carbohydrates. Hugely important. If I were to sort of rank what are the most dangerous foods um, in the American diet, in the European diet, it is refined carbohydrates, bar none. It's one of the most dangerous foods out there because insulin resistance and high blood sugar is the cause of most diseases because it creates so much inflammation in the body, okay? It paralyzes the immune system. So you gotta stay away from eliminate all of them, okay? They are not needed, they are not a food. Eliminate them, okay? Number two, starches, okay? Starches, again, starches, rice. I mean, even, you know, uh, the, the rice is a problem as well too, but also corn, uh, potatoes, uh, yuca, cassava, for those in the Caribbean and, and my African brothers and sisters. Um, these are things that you need to remove as well too because they turn into sugar in the body, okay? Um, 
potato turns in, especially the white potato, turns straight into sugar. I'll give you an example. If you were to compare the Japanese uh, purple potato to the white potato, there's no comparison. The white potato is an empty food, okay? It's a starch and starch is sugar and it, and it converts into sugar in the body, elevates the sugar, okay? So stay away from starches as well too. Again, um, corn, um, potatoes, yuca, cassava, stay away from the starch, okay, as well too. And starch is acidic as well too. And we all know that sugar is acid. It makes the body more acidic as well too which makes the body more inflamed as well too, all right? In all chronic diseases, diabetes, hypertension, uh, cancer, Alzheimer's, dementia, all have the underlying pinning of inflammation, okay? So starches turn into acid, acid makes the body inflamed, okay? Number three, high glycemic index foods, okay? High glycemic, what is high glycemic? Glycemic means is that means that it elevates the blood sugar. Okay, so when you eat this food, and let's say you were to take your blood sugar after consuming it, you will notice that it spikes your blood sugar levels. So these are high glycemic index foods. You want to eat low glycemic index foods. Okay, but the high glycemic index foods are going to be the things I just mentioned: uh, the refined carbohydrates, the starches, uh, sugary drinks. Do not drink liquid sugar. Okay, and when I tell you that is the worst way to consume sugar, it is by far the worst. Let me explain why. Because the natural way to consume sugar is through fruit, okay? Fruit have fiber, okay? So fiber attaches the sugar, okay? So when you're consuming the fruit and it breaks down, the sugar is still attached to the fiber. The fiber has to be slowly broken down in the stomach, okay? As it's being slowly broken down, in the stomach and in the intestines primarily, uh, small intestines, when it's being broken down, that sugar is being slowly released when it's attached to fiber. Well, guess what? When you consume refined carbohydrates and especially sugary beverages, which have zero fiber in them, okay? Now you have no fiber for, for protection. It's literally like taking sugar in your hand and throwing it into the blood, okay? literally taking sugar in your hand and throwing it into the blood system, which is gonna make the insulin levels spike. Okay, so hugely important. You wanna stay away from the sugary beverages, even the zero beverages. So when you see those Coke zeros and whatever zeros, it may say no sugar, no carbs. Guess what? The, it has an artificial sweetener in it. And that artificial sweetener triggers you to eat more. That artificial sweetener actually has been proven in science, even though it had, it technically doesn't have any carb or sugar in it, it increases your risk for diabetes and as I, I uh, for diabetes and also obesity. And as I told you guys before, the more fat we have in the body, the more gummed up that lock and key system will be. So insulin won't be able to get blood sugar inside of the cell, okay? So you gotta stay away from the sugary beverages, no matter how they come, sodas or, you know, even when you're making these beverages that are lemonade or whatever it may be, you want to stay away from those as well, too. And then you want to eat uh, high glycemic fruits, even high glycemic fruits. You want to eat those sparingly, too, because they aren't really the issue. High glycemic fruit, an example of that will be watermelon, which is actually very nutritious for you. But because you have such an imbalance in your body when it comes to sugar, and you have such an imbalance when it comes to insulin resistance, because of that, now you wanna lay off of the things that are even natural that have a high glycemic index as well too. So you wanna stay away from those like watermelon and cantaloupe in the meantime. You can have like uh, a cup and a half, uh, which will be fine because they have few, very few carbs, uh, but you wanna kinda of eat those sparingly as well too. All right, until you start to regain that balance, that blood sugar balance and that insulin balance back in the body. And then number four, dairy. You wanna stay away from dairy and why? As I mentioned before, that lock and key system becomes gummed up with saturated fat. And guess where we get a lot of our saturated fat? Dairy products. As a matter of fact, if you were to look at milk, and milk is cheese, but milk, is the 
cheese is the water removed from milk. So when you see cheese, like back in the days, we used, you used to see these blocks of cheese that people would get, and that's how it comes. That is simply milk with the water removed from it, dehydrated milk, okay? So that leftover portion is the fat. That's all cheese is. It is the fat left over from the milk. So it's so important that you understand that when you're consuming dairy, you're putting fat in the body. And when you're putting fat in the body, you can gum up that lock and key uh, system by putting so much fat deposits, not only in your muscles, but also in your liver too, which is hugely important because your liver not only manufactures um, you know, um, sugar or glycogen or glucose, I'm sorry, glucose, but it also stores sugar as well too. Okay, so when your liver becomes fatty, now you don't have this balancing system that was created to balance your blood sugar as well too because now your liver is fatty. Okay, diabetes is one of the number one causes of a fatty liver, okay, which is hugely important. And then number five, added sugar. I mean, I say that one for last because it's just, it makes, sure, it makes sense uh, for a lot of people that you need to remove all of the added sugar. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to remove added sugar from your diet, you need to learn how to read labels. Because a lot of times when you're reading the labels, you'll see it may say it only has five grams of sugar in it total, which not, isn't necessarily good because all of it is bad because it's unnatural sugar. But the thing that you're not looking at is the amount of servings in it. It may have 10 servings. So you're really consuming 50 grams of sugar, okay? So if you're going to remove added sugar from your diet, that 152 pounds of sugar that I mentioned earlier, you gotta learn how to read labels or you gotta learn how to eat natural. And what that means is eat like I suggest, eat natural whole foods, not the grocery store, but foods that have one ingredient, okay? Avocado, arugula, <laughs> you know, um, you know, fruits, you know, vegetables like green peppers, onions, mushrooms. These are one ingredient foods. When you eat those foods, you don't have to learn how to read labels because it's only one ingredient. Okay. And so I highly recommend that you eliminate all processed foods, foods that come with a label and eat only whole foods. Okay. If you do that, you're gonna dramatically shift the amount of sugar that you're putting in your body. And the most important thing is you're gonna make it, you're gonna increase the health of your liver because now your liver is not gonna be being pounded by all of these food chemicals. And you're gonna dramatically decrease your risk for diabetes. If you have, if you're pre-diabetic, pre-diabetic, you're gonna decrease your risk from becoming diabetic. If you're diabetic, you're gonna decrease your risk from converting from type two diabetes to type one diabetes. And if you're type one diabetic, you're gonna decrease your risk um, for all of the things that I mentioned before, the number one cause of amputation, uh, one of the leading causes of kidney failure, one of the leading causes of blindness. You're gonna decrease all of those things exponentially, but also have the potential to even convert or reverse yourself out of type one diabetes too. Okay, so this is why I highly recommend that people, you know, avoid these five foods. Okay, and if you can avoid these five foods, uh, you're gonna dramatically increase your health. Okay, because I see that it is unfortunate that the direction that we're going is trending towards more and more sugar and more and more disease. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, if you learned a lot about, you know, what you need to do as a form of prevention, okay, um, and you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notification button, share this, because we need to get this message out to the people so that they can know and understand how they can heal themselves. Because here's the thing, you're not going to learn this, you know, like when you go in for your doctor visits, they're, gonna, they're not going to teach you how to, they're not going to teach you how to prevent diabetes, they're not gonna teach you to stay away from these foods. As a matter of fact, this is your homework and we're gonna close out. I want you to go to the ADA's website, the American Diabetes Association website. Look at the foods that they recommend and what you will notice is, is that many of these foods are on the list. Their list of foods that are okay for you to eat, their diet is a diet for diabetes, okay? So it's so important that we know and understand that is not 
the, the way you're being taught first isn't prevention and the way you're being taught is actually leading you towards you know um your your condition getting worse or leading you towards actually you know producing that condition in your body as well so um it's just so important like people understand that because I watch people struggle with this all the time. I've even talked to dietitians and nutritionists and doctors about them having diabetes and telling them what they need to do and they made the shift. I mean, I'm like literally a dietitian, a doctor or a nutritionist with diabetes, okay? And then, and they're educating people. And then I give them a few tips and all of a sudden the condition improves. It's telling you that even they don't know because they're being miseducated. Thanks for watching this video, but be sure to check the next video out that's right here.